Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we automate without scripts. Have you ever taken the time to simply try to build an automated system without scripts? It can be quite difficult, but today we're going to build an auto mining machine or auto drilling machine that doesn't require any scripts. We have a basic setup. There's only five drills, a piston, a rotor, a sensor here, a sensor there. two timer blocks and of course it's just a single battery powering it because we're currently in creative mode I've also put in a control panel here so we can easily operate this thing and I'll show you how to build all these things and rig next to it see it just starts spinning as soon as you hit the button it goes around the sensor and you can see it dropped but then it stopped it goes about half a meter every single time it goes around. Now I wouldn't typically put these drills at this type of speed. This is up to five I think right now and I usually keep it at about 0.71 for accurate drilling and not to overwork the drill bits. But this thing will slowly lower, not clogging up the drills because it's only dropping by half a meter at a time and it'll be able to continue chug along until you run out of piston length. Now you could always add more pistons to this, but you'd have to add more sensors and more timer blocks. Not a big deal. So as you progress in the hole's depth, you can continue to break down and rebuild the entire thing. I'll show you what's going on here. So if you access the terminal, we can see that the piston just moved to 6 meters. Below us, you might be able to see the drills. And as they cross past the sensor, of course, they jumped. And I fast forward this a little bit, but the idea is it's moving half a meter at a time. Once it gets to the max position, it just kind of stops because the piston can't go any further. In the next version, we're going to build an instant button so it shuts everything off and retracts the piston. Okay, so to start out, of course, we need a base of some sort. To follow suit of the last platform, I'm just going to use multiple of these lightweight blocks. It's up to you what you want to use. If you're playing in survival mode, I would probably use more batteries. I only put one battery on here, especially if you're trying to recharge and mine at the same time. And then we just have some conveyors. I'm going to go about eight tall. If you go eight tall, that allows for one piston, one rotor, and the drills, and putting them really close to the surface, or the same level as the base of the platform itself. I also went six blocks out because we're going to put five drills on here, and we want at least one space between the drill and the conveyor where we're going to put the sensors. Now I'm putting the rotor on the bottom and then connecting the drills. If you put the rotor on top, you can do it that way too, but I find it shakes a lot less if you put the rotor at the end of the piston instead of putting the piston at the end of the rotor. I accidentally dropped that one. All right, so that's the basic setup. Let me just place the two sensors. Let's see, where was it on the other side? I think there was just two conveyor spaces. Yep, so make it three away. This thing on the other side extended all the way to six meters, but then stopped once it reached the end of the top sensor. So that's why I had to add two sensors. So with my setup, it's kind of hits about six meters and that's about it for the sensor range. You could increase the bottom detection of the sensor or the outward detection of it, but it doesn't really help you much and it's still about six to seven meters is about it for the range of the sensors.
This is just a general refinery. I put four speed modules on it, and then I'm going to put a large cargo container. Just made this platform a little bigger. Don't want it to just hang off in space. There we go. And then throw on some simple conveyor tubes. When you're in survival mode, these items don't take that many resources besides the refinery and the large storage cargo. And that should do it. Now, when we do run this automated wise, the ore is going to go into the refiner automatically, get refined, and then the excess is going to go into a large storage container. I recommend you definitely have additional storage container because once your refiner gets filled up, it's going to stop. So on the controls here, I'm going to group all the drills together in one slot. This makes it easier when you start to program the timer blocks. And then for the advanced rotor, all we need to do is lock the rotor, and then we're going to set the velocity of it. Like I said, 0 0.71 RPM is about all I'll do, otherwise you put too much torque against the drill heads themselves, and they will break over time, or the rotor will break. And then we keep it locked, and we'll move on to the sensor, or the timer block. Let's try the timer block first. Now for the timer block, we have to set up the initial delay that we want. I don't want to wait 10 seconds. I think five seconds is fine because you can turn around and see the activities that are going on at five seconds. 10 seconds, she'll be standing there for about seven seconds. Then we set this rotor to unlock and lock. And then drag down the drills and we're gonna have those turn on and off. Now this timer is only gonna activate them one time because this is the primary timer block. Then we go to the timer block two. And then before timer block two, I guess I will go to the sensor and I adjust the right extent, the top extent, the back extent, and that should about do it. We want to keep the front extent and the bottom extent to about five meters. We don't want it to detect players because then every time we go by it, it's actually going to make it move again. The auto proximity alert is an option. If you want to hear it beep every time, go right ahead, but I don't. The most important part is to select detect subgrids. That's what this drilling apparatus is. It is a subgrid. All the rest of these settings, you can change or leave. It doesn't really affect it. I think that's it. Now we just have to set up the actions. So the first action we want to have happen is to extend this piston. So we're gonna select to increase maximum distance, not to extend it itself, but increase maximum distance. So it's only gonna increase the maximum distance until you tell it to stop. But in order to do this, we need to set the piston to the most minimum extension of the distance itself back to zero. Because it starts out at 10, but we want it to be zero so it can actually extend to 10. And then once you have it there, everything is on, looks good. Then we should just have to hit this reverse button and it shouldn't move. But we want it on that reverse button so we know it's going to extend and not retract. They all automatically start in the retract position until you hit reverse. Now this is where our timer block two comes into play. And this is how long you're allowing the piston to extend for. How much time. So we're putting it four seconds. That gives you about a half a meter, sometimes a little farther than a half a meter. But as long as you don't exceed past two and a half meters, you should be fine. 
That's going to toggle the piston on and off, which essentially the piston is going to be on until the timer after four seconds turns it off. Then we're going to put the other timer, timer block two, on here. And that's going to start the time, and that's in your sensor. So it might get confusing after a while, the sensors and timers, but that's the good thing about having a video. You can always play it back if you need to. Once again, I'm setting this sensor to the exact same settings as the last one. So we get rid of the left, right, and back extent. Then, of course, switch off detect players, get rid of the proximity sensor because it's annoying. Detect owner has to be on. Detect subgrids has to be on. Those are the only two really that are mandatory for this thing to work. All right, then we set up these actions and it's basically the repeat of the first one. We're gonna put the piston, maximum distance increased or increase maximum distance, whichever you prefer, and then toggle block two. And for this, we're going to have it start because we're starting it with a delay. And then we just need to set up the controls, I think, in order to set the first timer to a button. Basically to tell it when to start. You can always go back through and trigger now by going into your terminal and then selecting timer and then just clicking on trigger now. But it's more fun and more convenient to have a button for it. If we set it over here, I think we should be able to watch the drills as they work. If you don't know how to use a button panel, just go to the button, press K, and then you can select whatever action you want that button to do. We want to click basically start on the first timer block. Looks like we have everything else in order. We should just be able to hit the button and let this thing run. All right. And then remember, we have a five second delay. So you think you're missing anything, you know, kind of give a look, see, and there it goes. Now this one is set a lot lower than the other drills. I set up the other drills to be higher to illustrate the function of it without actually digging into the ground. But in this case, we want it to dig into the ground because we want to test our refiner out and our large cargo container at the same time. As you notice, it is spinning a lot slower than the other one behind it. Because it is moving so slow, I think I'm going to fast forward after we get to the first drop or the first extension. There it is. As you can see, it dropped about a half a meter. Looks like we're just simply picking up more dust at this point. And that's the sped up version. It's actually only gone a meter, but now you can kind of see it's working its way into the ground. Of course, we could run this entire time, but it would take forever to sit here and watch it. And that's kind of the point. We want it to take a while so we have time to build our ship or whatever else we're working on, especially if there's an enemy nearby and we want to maintain our stuff before the next attack, but we still need the resources. Essentially, you can just keep this thing going on and on and on, and eventually it will just stop when it hits the limit of the extent of the piston itself. 
Now next, we're adding this additional timer block, or timer block number three, because once we hit the end, we want to be able to shut this thing off without having to do everything manually. So we're going to set this one up to do the exact opposite of what the first timer block does. So we're going to go to groups, grab the drills, toggle block on and off, and this is going to turn it off instead of turning them on. Next, we'll grab the piston and we'll set that to retract. And instead of setting the minimum on the retract, it's already at zero. So when we do that, it'll automatically go all the way up. And then, of course, when it is moving up, we don't want it to think it's going to go back down. So we have to turn the sensors off as well. And then finally, the rotor. We want the rotor to not continuously spin, but to lock into position. And so that way we don't end up hitting it or running into it or it doesn't hit something else. If you want to keep it spinning, it doesn't matter. All right. Now to set up the button, all we need to do since we set up the timer block is grab the number three toggle block, put it in the position of the button. And since it already has a delay set on it, we're just going to hit start. And it'll start by counting down however many seconds we put it just like the first timer. In this case, I'm only putting it for five seconds again. 10 seconds just seems way too long. Now let's see if we have accumulated anything in our system yet. Nothing in the large cargo, we'd have to gain a lot in order to fill that thing. But it does look like we have some iron and stuff and it easily goes into the cargo container. So in theory, as we gained more and more into the refiner, it would automatically go into a large cargo container. Well, let's test out this button now. Yep, turn off the drills, rotor stop, and the piston's retracting. And there you have it. That is an automated drilling system with no scripts, no codes, no worries. You could easily replicate it and make it longer and longer and longer if you need to. You just have to move your sensors. Well, that and add additional pistons. But with a click of a button, we started it back up. And we allow it to do its thing. Now overall, it doesn't look that impressive with only having one piston on there, but if you have three pistons in a row, imagine you're gonna continue digging for 30 meters. And that's gonna take quite a while, but that's plenty of time to build an incredible ship. Well, thanks for watching. And I hope you leave your comments, tips, and tricks in the comment section below. I appreciate it.